Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters. <coughs> uh, that was a last minute choice for a title, and I hope it worked. You got, are you all attentive now? <laughs> uh, I want to uh, tell you something about myself without expatiating, and, uh, and uh, let you form some um, opinions or, or, or expectations. What can you expect from me? Uh, so I started out as a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my parents grew up in South Dakota, a small town South Dakota. I was born in South Dakota when my dad came back from the war. He was in the Pacific, uh, World War II, as a CB. You all know what a CB is, a Navy Construction Battalion. You've seen John Wayne in the movies, maybe? Or oh, maybe it's too old of a movie. <laughs> anyway, so they grew up in the Depression and then World War II, and and so that affected them, obviously, and it also affected me. I'm the oldest of what turned out to be six uh, children. Five sort of grouped together, and then one much later. <laughs> uh, and my, my life is, sort of, is divided into three. I, I look, think of it as a three-section three life. So the first part is the formative years, which, you know, I grew up in the time when in the summertime, we disappeared after breakfast, came back home for lunch, disappeared again until <laughs> supper time. If anybody needed us, they go to the uh, baseball field. That's where we were. And uh, we'd start out the morning by riding my bike around all over the neighborhood to try and get enough people together for a team. And and I, you know, I can't really uh, empathize. Empathize isn't quite the right word, but with parents today who need their children close by all the time, I mean, I understand the reasons, but what a huge burden. So, anyway, the formative years were you know, uneventful, but formative. Uh, then the second part of my life was spent in, I, I took uh, classes, got a degree in German to teach, <laughs> Uh, couldn't get a job because I had never been to Germany. So, because I didn't have deep pockets, I looked around for a way to get to Germany. I enlisted in the Air Force. This was at the tail end of the Vietnam era. I had a draft number, but uh, it was a high number, so I didn't really have to worry about being drafted. So I volunteered for language school. Got to Germany eventually, but first I had to go to Alaska. Uh, <coughs> And while I was in Germany, we started our family. My, I was married at the time, and we had our first child there, which uh, produced uh, an event that is, is sort of a strange event, but it, it directly relates to the title. The uh, When you uh, have a child abroad, you have to get special paperwork. It's, uh, this, there's a certificate from the consular office that says, uh, Certificate of Birth Abroad of a United States Citizen. So I had to go to the consular office, which was in, uh, well, it doesn't matter where it was. But in coming out of that office, I had just civilian clothes on. I was next to um, a young man with, in an Army uniform, and he had a copy of the Stars and Stripes which is the newspaper published by the U.S. Army. And we had to cross a busy street. There's two, two traffic lanes separated by a broad median. And as I walked across, there are painted crosswalks there. This is a busy place. And the law in Germany, as it is here, says you have, are obligated to yield the right of way to pedestrians in the Zebra striped crosswalk. So we're walking along and he's reading his newspaper and he was not watching where he was going. And he was sort of using me as a, a guide. And we got across the first traffic lane just fine and walked across the median. And as we got to the other side of the median, I looked up this way and there's a cement truck coming. 
and it was coming obviously too fast to stop. This truck was not going to stop. There was no doubt in my mind it was not going to stop. So we're walking along, and as we got about a step from the curb, I stopped, and the other guy didn't. And I put out my hand, and I touched his newspaper, and sort of broke his concentration, and he, 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 he stopped one step from death. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the truck roared by and gravel and sand flew up and and he sort of did one of these things and and said, Oh, thanks. Got his newspaper and walked on. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time that disturbed me a lot. I, I thought, I, you know, I think that was a pretty modest response for, you know, <laughs> not being, you know, hamburger on the front of a, of a cement truck. But, so I let it go, and then I entered the third and final phase of my life where I am now, and in that phase I looked for a, uh, an ideal. I think everybody needs an ideal for their life, something that they can keep in front of them, something they can focus on that's always uh, present, and never changes, and something that will take you right through to the end. And and when I found that, I don't want to go into that part right now. Uh, I'll, I'll wait and expatiate more. <laughs> uh, but suffice to say that 20 plus years later, <coughs> that incident on the street there in front of the brigade headquarters in Berlin, finally, everything clicked into place, why, why that had been bothering me for 20, 25 years. And I realized that it was really my job to save lives, that's my job. And, and it's not a big, awesome responsibility, it's just being aware of the people around you and what it needs to turn them away from what could be a injurious or even deadly experience. So, I'll conclude by saying that what you can expect from me is that if I see that you're in danger, I will reach out and maybe, just maybe, save a life. Thank you.